I think finals, especially for Academy, is just a way to showcase what we've learned and how good we've become since the beginning of the split. It's a good way to break that expectation everyone's thought from Echo Fox Academy that everybody on this team is worth a lot and that we are very good players and that we have a future in esports. Well, welcome back, League fans. So a lot to show here for the Fox mm -hmm. Squad here as FlyQuest are just one win away from earning the title of Academy League Spring Split Champion, up 2-0 over Echo Fox in the series. Yeah, I mean, that could be a pretty good way of proving your value is coming back, reverse sweeping the mm -hmm. finals of Academy, but they have a pretty tough road ahead of them. Certainly do, though. Uh, have to highlight Eri, though, in that last game, kind of went somewhat under the radar on the Caitlyn in game one, thanks to Shrimp overperforming. Shrimp had a, a fine game for him, but Eri just went off in this game on Caitlyn. And yeah. kind of quietly as well. Like, he did 15, 20 minutes. Like, oh, why does he have seven kills? Oops. Yeah, out of nowhere. Did have a little bit of a rough end to the game. He's got picked off two times. But was still the biggest factor, most likely, in why they were able to have such great objective control. You heard Golden Glue talking about it on the desk a little bit. Mm -hmm. The trap line that they set down, as well as all those tanks, this huge front line that they build. If they don't get onto Airy, he's going to win them the game, which has happened twice now in a row. Yeah, it feels like in general, uh, we expect the bot lane to be a little more, you know, neutral, a little bit more farming back and forth. But with the Caitlyn, found a lot of pressure in that 2v2. And that's kind of warping the rest of the game. Yeah, I think Invert is a guy who, you know, we're talking about who's standing out, who's making a name for themselves, who's building a resume a little bit. Uh, Invert uh, has been doing a fantastic job with this FlyQuest squad. We're talking about this insane level of macro that they seem to have over their opponents in Academy. And you kind of got to look at him, this guy who's been with the University of Toronto Trio. It's actually a quadro quadra team thing where yep. he's been with them all this time and now here in academy with them as well doing a great job potentially leading them to the victory of the uh finals what's happening with your boy peter mark z i don't know i believe in peter zang all right well we'll see what he has cooked up here with the rest of fox academy in the draft tom Ketch, zaya the first two bands there's swain once again fly quest have just kept him out of the game Yep, comes recommended. Champion's very strong. We'll see if they grab. Yep, there's the advice uh, that the analyst desk was giving them. Yep. I'm sure they needed the analyst test to tell them to ban Caitlyn in phase one. Hey, sometimes they do. Cloud9 didn't, or not, excuse me, not Cloud9. TSM uh, didn't ban Thresh after everyone was like, you should probably ban that champ. <laughs> well, I like the adaptation here from Fox regardless, taking down not one, but two marksmen, including the one that areas performed on two games in a row. Rise, another nice band there for Fly. Picking on DeMonte a little bit there with two mid lane bands. Yeah, DeMonte, you know, we said he wasn't able to influence the game quite as much as we were hoping, but still had a great game overall on Rise, so you can understand that respect ban. And Jin shooting up in the priority, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think, three for three on Fly taking Marksman in first rotation. So certainly prioritizing strength there in the bot lane. It's worked out so far as We'll see what Fox have to answer for here. Skana is up, Sidwani is up as well. Both junglers have opted to take Sedge over Skana. But Cho'Gath actually going to be the Ooh. first pick. He's been banned twice already. So Orm's like, give me the tank. Give yeah. me the champion I know. I mean, I'm going to wait to see how the rest of this pans out. But I do like the adaptations coming in a little bit here. The fact that they get rid of that Caitlyn. Alarim's like, I'm sick of getting my Cho'Gath banned out. Give me that. Uh, they also go back to the Sejuani instead of the Skarner. Um, as much as I think... Auto Orange looked a little bit better on the Skarner pick. He still got punished a little bit too much. There were some times where with his invades, he still died. Uh, and I think they're saying here on Echo Fox's side, if we can get a better bot lane, hopefully that means Auto Orange isn't under quite as much pressure and then he can play those team fights out better when he has that Sejuani pick. Well, it's kind of going to drop through picks and bands most likely. Morgana and Zac, the next two picks here for FlyQuest. So pretty high priority on the Morgana to really pressure and bully in these 2v2 lanes here for FlyQuest and Shrimp. Just abandoning Skarner and going straight tank v tank for the jungle matchup. Yeah, that is surprising, you know? I, I can't quite figure out why they decided to drop the priority that much. It looked great in game one, looked decent in game two, and then here they're saying, forget it. I wonder if it's something to do with that Cho'Gath pick potentially becoming such a meatball that he's not a frontliner you want to pull in. Uh, maybe that's why they're choosing not to do it, but we'll have to see. That Thresh coming back as well. Pretty good performance by Papa Tao. Yep. So no surprise there. It is into Morgana, uh, so we'll have to see how that goes. But people are starting to say, ah, screw it to the counters and still pick Thresh because he does do so many other things. Yeah, I mean, 2v2, usually generally pretty fine. And uh, as you said, kind of when the mid game opens up, you can get picks and try and snowball from there. I think Fox have a good plan, wanting to just pick a little more playmaking for themselves, realizing that, again, they need to brute force more of these situations to 
kind of open up big enough advantage to actually take a game here. This is also the first time that we're going to see a mis mismatch first draft That's phase. True. So we're going to see some more targeted bans. 80 carries for FlyQuest, no surprise, as they have the Jin to Echo Fox's nothing. Same with the top side, so the Orn and the Shen ban comes in. I like the Shen ban, takes it into the Cho'Gath, very annoying to play with it against that global. And then Orn's has been a really solid champion for no one, one of the best team fighting tanks. So kind of take the, the good stuff away from the top side. Ban Ash here actually for FlyQuest. So lost his, oh my God, he's insta a Draven. Draven. Let's go. I thought he was joking, but apparently not. Flashes the Draven for half a second and locks that in. Man on a mission here in the 2v2. I like the speed with which he locked it in too, not giving them time to really react to it or anything like that. Uh, and showing a lot of confidence because you heard Golden Glue once again harken back to the desk about finding something to do differently. They talked about the Renekton for them, did actually get a pretty huge lead, but just couldn't convert into the game win. Here they're gonna try to do something similar, but on the bot side of the map for Echo Fox Academy. There's Scion for no, possibly for mid, but I very much doubt it. And we'll see what Keem wants to take. Oriana still open, so probably gonna take Oriana. Three for three. Come on to the counter pick, but ooh, actually a swap up at Azir, kind of a takeaway here. Keen will take that blind into Demonte. Interesting. All right, he's doing it. Straight for Cassidy in there for Demonte. Echo Fox going for some lane-focused picks this time around. Cassidy uh, doesn't do great uh, early on because he's pushing a little bit like a lot of champions do into his ear, but can become a bit of a threat later on. And then uh, can, assuming you take on Seal Spellbook, swap the TP, and then you can start going for this 1v1 strategy. We'll have to see how that works out because FlyQuest Academy's macro has been on point in limiting some champions that could potentially split off from the group. I mean, at a very basic level, I think it's, what's, what's been the problems? Well, we can't win around the map, so we need to win lanes harder so we get a bigger advantage. And the other one is, when we do team fight, we can't kill the stupid carries. They just get people that ignore the front line and try and take people down and get aggressive. I mean, look, we talk about a swap being pretty necessary here for Echo Fox, given that they are backs against the wall for all three potential remaining games. A little different, effective, We'll have to find out. Yeah, this is quite a way to head into game three. Uh, you can see that Echo Fox is feeling the pressure, knowing that they needed to change things up. And this is a pretty drastic shift with a very lane dominant AD carry and an assassin split pushing mid laner, which is not really the meta right now. And I guess on the other side, we've talked how consistent and good FlyQuest have looked all series long. The obvious issue, and everyone always talks about it with Kassan, but it's going to be even even a bigger problem here in this game. FlyQuest have won every game so far, playing intelligently around the map, securing objectives, and then effortlessly sieging turrets. Kassan is uh, about as good as a melee minion in a siege. <laughs> Yeah, as this far as defending them goes. I mean, this is one of those strategies we're saying, like, let's not let them get to that position, obviously. Yes. We want to get a lead through our bot lane, buy space for Demonte to become a, like you said, a split push nuisance, and then who's really going to match that on the side of FlyQuest? Uh, I do like the strategy. It doesn't feel like Echo Fox has the chops to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with FlyQuest in rotations and objective control, so focus instead on splitting them up, divide and conquer, as well as a very aggressive early game. Well, it should be fun, but right now teams are spread across Summoner's Rift for what could be our final game of the Academy League 2018 Spring Final. FlyQuest looking for the sweep to 6-0 their playoffs here in Academy and really cement themselves as the dominant force of the Spring. Echo Fox going to try and at least get on the scoreboard and from there, who knows? Yep, definitely whenever you pull one of these miracle Minions reverse sweep sword. comebacks, you don't think about game five, you just think about one game at a time and right now, that's what they're doing. Finding a win any way they can right here. Well, no invades coming through. Everyone just kind of chilling out for these first few minutes of the game. That Trimp is going to start blue side by the looks of things. And same side there for Odd Orange, going to get some help from Aloran. So we've seen bot lane be, I think, a, a lot more important than we expected in this game. Kind of falling back in line with the metagame a little bit more. So certainly passing that way potentially for both these junglers. It's been important in a bit of a strange way. It feels like 10, 15 minutes in, Aerie and Lost are relatively close, um, but then Aerie on that Caitlyn has been such a monster in team fights as well, setting up around objectives and the strategy of FlyQuest using picks like the Caitlyn has been impressive, but it hasn't really been like one bot lane is really smashing the other one just in terms of their, their laning. It was, oh, look at this great coordination between Shrimp and JJ in the first 10 minutes of the game in game one. Yep, we've certainly seen Xavier's Morgana give them trouble, but 
Again, it feels like the Caitlyn was more of the issue, so we'll see if that holds true or not. As in the top side of Lorem, very aggressive early pick for this Cho'Gath. Was in the first rotation there for them. We'll see if he can get more of a potential 1v1 lead. Papa Chow has eaten the first binding. One of many to come, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. People talk about the Morgana counterpick into the Thresh. It's not just the fact that you have the Black Shield for stopping the uh, hook. The fact that you can just W kind of the wave and push in. Thresh has a really hard time matching the push. And then if you have minions and he doesn't, it's easier to land bindings than for him to land hooks. And if he does try and throw one, it has a bigger lead up than the binding, so you can then Black Shield it. There's a couple things obviously working well for Morgana here. Well, so the jungle is just kind of clearing through. Crimp on the Krugs right now. After clearing all of his red side and leaving two camps up on the blue. Good binding again from JJ. Hook is going to miss. As Eri walks left. And uh, despite the lack of Caitlyn, it does feel like their early pressure is still here. Getting the minions pushed in aggressively under the turret, continuing to poke with Tormented Soil. But a little different of a game plan without that Skarner pick. You don't really know what you're going to get into there. As uh, you can see, like you said, oof. That chain CC combo. Also, that's another thing that Morgana does great with Jin. Set them up for those roots, and then you get to keep them on the Tormented Soil even longer. Uh, but there's no Skarner, like we were saying this time around, to go for those invades and really try and abuse that Sejuani quite like we saw in game one. Let's see if 2v2 that can have any problems. Oh, a good pull in there. Looking for Odd Orange. Get him off the butt for the play. It is wonderful. JJ now the next one to be chased down, but Permafrost stack's not applied still. Gets a summoner out of the Jin there. Very creative gank attempt. Good attempt. They did chunk them out a little bit to help offset some of that pressure that they were under. Cost them an ignite. Uh, they did trade flashes on the AD carry, but they have a lower kill threat now for that Draven without the ignite. So they need to be careful in 2v2s because your healing will get cut from the heal, but theirs will still be in full effect. So don't get too baited into it. You can see at least using that space to pressure down more and at least find a decent back timing. Shrimp, though, on the invade. Now the Odd Orange showed himself in the bot lane, and Demonte is having some issues, as expected, here in the lane. CSing is good, which is really important on Kassan in a matchup like this, but the uh, harassment pressure is costing him a lot of health. Shrimp going out. Oh, nice fight. Yep, gets it for Odd Orange, I believe. I think he got the big one. And now has to run away, slow from no going to force him to Arctic Assault to safety, but so far so good. It's a dive attempt here. Demonte knows he's going to back away. It's one of the reasons Shrimp can play so aggressive, the fact that you know that there's no chance anyone else is coming down. Alrim uh, could potentially match from the top side, but obviously with Keen having as much pressure as he has in the mid lane, it's pretty difficult. But like you said, most importantly in the mid lane, the fact that the Kassin has stayed relatively even in CS, goes back, swaps out to the TP so he doesn't die because he was holding onto the barrier until that point. And now he can start focusing a little bit more. Interestingly, goes for the no magic mantle, or excuse me, the uh, Negatron cloak to start things off, focusing on that instead of sustain like you sometimes see with the uh, uh, Catalyst. Probably didn't have enough gold for it. Yep. No tier either, if he's, is he, as he's likely going to go that way at some point also. So see if that delays much at all. We did see a bit of this in game one where the matchup looked pretty even on the CS front, but King was able to really convert that pushing into turret damage and additional pressure. So, so far the turret's pretty healthy, but we'll see if that changes as King returns back with a stinger in his 1v1. And lots playing up, pops the W to threaten. Get off that wave. <laughs> they got off at least a couple creeps, but... Nothing too massive right now. It looks like the lane's just going to fall back into a decent spot, and PyQuest going to go ahead and deal with that. Yep. And they're fine playing this a little reserve. We talk about how great FlyQuest objective control is and all that, and that's especially good into Draven if you can avoid some of the early kills. Last game didn't really play out that way. There was a ton of kills in that game, but hopefully FlyQuest is going to revert more to their play style in the first game. Yeah, 10 CS up for Eri, so actually doing a nice job there in the 2v2 so far. Odd Orange, though, does take down that Scuttle Crab. He's trying to, again, I think track Shrimp a little more diligently. Just make sure that those objectives and that vision doesn't get set up nearly as easily as it has in the first few games. Especially with the fact that Demonte has hit 6 now. He is through the most difficult part of the laning phase for himself. Means that Echo Fox uh, has gone through the hard part of their mashups, whereas things might start getting more difficult for FlyQuest from here on out. Last nice silence there from Alorum. Able to cancel out really any big Q damage. As he's looking okay in the matchup, getting pressure right now, though the CS is even. It's been a 
pretty quiet one, which I have to think favors FlyQuest, given how the first two games have gone. So far, yes, if, if nothing breaks out, but the big thing is if something does happen in the bot lane, it will go great for Oh, he's in there again. They're gonna move Lost in and try and get the 2v2 kill. JJ hits the target to stand aside, misses by Lost, flashes in, first blood in the 2v2. And that was exactly what I was just talking about. They have to watch out for getting the cash in on the Draven. Things seem to turn south very quickly in this game. Getting that first blood, he's gonna be able to go back, sitting on 1,700 gold off that one, and gonna start building towards his Ghost Blade, most likely. Getting right. those aggressive items in there. Well, I have to see just how much worse this could get for FlyQuest bot laners. So far, so good in the 2v2. Speaking of that, brewing in the mid lane here, but Odd Orange spots Shrimp and backs away. Gonna retake that Scuttle Crab as Demonte forced back by Keen's pressure on Azir. And the Negatron Cloak not quite doing enough, but he is holding on just fine, like we said. Only a 60s deficit and buying time for his bot lane to make stuff like this happen as JJ just walks a little bit too far forward, then can follow up on this hook, and the Ignite is back up most importantly, so they have that all in kill threat again. Don't know if they were tracking that one quite closely or not, but able to find that kill as a result. Yep, big cash in there. Stand aside wasn't quite enough to catch pre-flash, so Lost did have to burn his summoner to secure that kill. Well worth it for the goal, but we'll see if maybe Shrimp pays attention down there to the bot lane. It's only airy now. Versus Papa Chow with the flashes as Demonte will get blue buff for himself. Ruth walks back in towards the lane, does have that catalyst as well, so might be skipping the tier, although it might just be really late. Yeah, it's one of those things where there are a number of different build paths, and as well as the fact that pre-6, you don't really need the tier. It's not like Cassiopeia where you're spamming Q and E from level two on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, once you start getting those ultimate stacks, that's when you really start uh, building up a little bit faster. But it's also the kind of thing where you don't necessarily need the tier. In a game where you're looking to power spike pretty hard with this Draven pick, I don't think you want to go like row a tier like you sometimes see. They want that Abyssal Mass to go for some more aggressive plays and make sure that they're power spiking close to the same times. Well, you can see now a little bit more respect being paid by FlyQuest Academy for the 2v2. Demonte also getting aggressive on the cane. Decent damage down there. Good trade. Yep. Passing and passive coming up good as Echo Fox once again with pressure here in the early game. Gonna try and take this Drake down. We'll pull it out of the way. Only that ward in the back of the pit. And this should be over to Fox Academy. Shrimp might try to deal. Oh, actually gonna just be patient here. Sionalt is going all the way over. No, can't quite make it. Cho'Gath falling not too far behind. Still low on the Drake here. Leap kind of completed here perhaps. Papa Chow looking for a juke, doesn't grab it. Now gonna get slammed back in towards it, but I think the damage might be done. Shrimp does grab the Drake. But now the fight's gonna break out. Goblet's in there for Shrimp. Hold there by Odd Orange. Long range hits in onto No Demonte. And he's gonna try and get a kill into JJ in the back as lost. Does finally finish off Shrimp. Draven on finding a bit of damage. He snipes JJ. And now the follow-up rupture lands. Back on the side as the hook connects as well. The play back in and Echo Fox Academy have sprung to life. That early game snowball is in full effect here, Pastry. They did lose the dragon, but they got three more kills for it. Great play by them. They're able to find Shrimp early on and then chase down the other side of the fight as well as only have one frontline member left alive. Shrimp you know, kind of pulls Papa Chow in towards him to kind of start this fight, but I don't think he really wanted that as it just puts him in an easier position to Lantern Lost in on top of him. And then as a result, he gets popped in the Bloblet form. They leave Lost alone to kind of deal with those. Auto Orange helping out a little bit, but he gets that kill. And then JJ got so low, Lost can just snipe out the second kill as well. And then all this CC chasing down, able to find the third and final kill right there on to know. Extremely well played there by Echo Fox, who have a 3-0 and 1 Draven. Try and snowball through this game. Ghost Blade is done. Pickaxe also ready, and Eri has Merc Treads and a Hammer to match so far. Still got some gold to spend, so has a thousand more to contribute to his next few items, but this is the Draven that, despite having a minor CS deficit, is snowballing hugely ahead in this game. 5,200 gold to 38. That's a lot. Yeah. And it's made even worse by the fact that, like you said, those Merc Treads for the Jin. got to look at that and kind of scratch your head. You have the Morgana pick to deal with some of the CC that's going to come in from the hooks or anything like that. He hasn't even been getting hooked that much this game. It's nice to negate some cash and then damage when he jumps on you. But at this point, you don't have any damage and you can't really fight. So does it matter if the 
Jin can live through the casted inverse if the other AD carry is destroying your front line. Like, it's, it's kind of like you're protecting yourself but damning your team. I'll have to guess, see how it all plays out, but Ari certainly feeling the pressure in the, of the early Draven power on Oren under his red buff in the meantime. As the map will reset. Still, towers are up. First Drake did go to FlyQuest, so they're holding true on their objective focus game. Cost them a little too much. Like Fox are almost up to 2,000 gold, but nothing, nothing super worrying just yet. But you have to think that kind of the start they wanted is now there, and the snowball can continue as long as they build up a little bit more pressure. Absolutely, the fact that Keen getting as many auto attacks in as he can, but still not chunking out Demonte nearly like he was pre-6. Uh, that lane has mostly evened out, and the fact that Demonte with teleport can go in on map plays faster, and the the fact that Kassen will just roam better than a lot of mid laners anyways means that it's going to be very hard for FlyQuest to pick fights from here. That's what they really want to do. They want to kill this Draven, shut him down. But how are you going to do that when you're always going to be down a man in most of these fights? Yeah, and we've seen, again, a lot of FlyQuest vision pressing up into the enemy jungle, opening up space, finding opportunities. Have to think that similar plans should be in action here for Echo Fox. Bot lane's a really easy target to attack. You open up the map, you continue to snowball your Draven that's already very fed. I think Echo Fox uh, have all the pieces. We'll see if they can execute kind of moving in towards the early stages of the mid game. Yeah, and playing for an objective focused strategy is obviously a lot harder to do too when you can't posture around objectives. I mean, that's one of the, the most important things is being even. That's why FlyQuest having a net negative one at 15 was so important for them because it allowed them to focus on objectives instead of protecting turrets or trying to find pickoffs to find their way back into the game. Here they are definitely on the back foot and kind of out of their comfort zone. Things have maintained a bit of quietness, but Lost is going to go back and spend some gold. Still very far ahead as far as those gold leads go, because things haven't shifted really at all. The F Sword is up for him, so perhaps IE second to the Draven. Alarm in the meantime is getting pretty good traction in this 1v1, clearly knows his way around the matchup. Not a massive CS lead, but at least getting the pressure going and that tower pushing happening. Yeah, one of the things Sion does well in a lot of matchups is kind of pokes you out with the shout or the Q, whichever one he feels like he needs to max. Uh, Cho'Gath has the sustain built into his passive to deal with that kind of poke, as well as the fact that if it gets into kind of extended trades, the E will do a ton of damage to No, and he doesn't really have the tools to really answer back. Yes, his W has some max health damage in there as well, but it often gets broken off by the uh, Cho'Gath pretty easily because he can silence you while you're charging it to make sure you can't activate it for the damage and then just break the shield off with his E. Dolente does finally have that tier, but should be fine to charge it up as the game goes on. Like you said, kind of needs it now. Now they have a rank 2 ultimate ready. Hook lands, but Papa Tower not going to follow that one. You can see them poking in, trying to get a little bit more vision. FlyQuest doing a good job defensively warding the proper side here on the bot lane, but whilst even with one little axe on the area, is doing a pretty sizable chunk of his health. Yeah, it's done. Very scary down there in the bot lane, and both teams prioritizing that for vision. Shrimp kind of hovering around with JJ, but you got to feel like the first throw of the game is going to break pretty soon here. It's hovering around 2K. It's been 2K ever since that dragon fight, basically. Uh, and Echo Fox wants to speed this game up, I would assume, but it does feel like they're struggling to break the turret as most teams still have decent health on them. Yeah, Draven, good in the 2v2 fights, but not great, especially against this do a getting too much turret damage down finally finds a, almost a full wave and a significant damage there for loss but perhaps some help being called down perhaps just a fight around the next drake as it is up in five seconds yeah absolutely they're able to win that Ooh. next dragon fight telegraph from shrimp but auto Orange doing a really nice job shadowing shrimp this game just kind of preventing any of those ganks or pressure Papato even roaming up first finding does hit onto odd orange but he's pretty tanky he'll stay to clear this out even going to get onto Shrimp and apply one stack of the passive. Demonte there first, as expected, given the pressure he has on Cassidy. And now that's going to force Eri to probably back away here, lancing him for Odd Orange. Ulti at the ready. Eri just can't stay, and this should be the first turret. Yeah, good map movement down there. Like you said, setting up around the dragon opens up a path for the whole team to kind of make their way down there and threaten that dive. Breaks the first turret open up to 3k gold lead, and probably going to be able to back off to that Ocean Dragon as well. If I recall correctly, it's also the first time Fox have taken the first turret in this series. I believe FlyQuest got it both times in the last few games. So certainly things are to a much better start here. And Drake going to go over as well. 
by Quest. They did get that first Cloud Drake, but they're going to lose this ocean. And as great as things are looking for Echo Fox right now, they need to keep this pressure up because we've seen FlyQuest behind in games before and win them multiple times in their semifinals uh, victory over Cloud9 Academy. And you can trust those guys to say that you need to keep the pressure on them all the way until the Nexus explodes because if you give them a chance, FlyQuest are able to stay composed and find their way back into these games. Yep. Next step, so kind of certainly there is Shrimp. He's going to start the Rift Herald here. Now that Fox are kind of all on different back timers. Mentioned Demonte, certainly good in a side lane once he gets going, and he's kind of at a point where he should be happy to leave. Curious to see if Fox kind of do the standard stuff and move their duo around to try and pressure more turrets, because getting the first turret's kind of the hard part with this sort of comp. But once you get the first one, it should be a lot easier to snowball the rest of the map and finally use that sideline cast and pressure that you pick the champion for. Like this, so we'll at least get the Rift Herald, so it's going to be easier to answer for a, a turret of their own. Yeah, good answer, like you said, the fact that even if they can't get a turret for it, it is denying it from Echo Fox as well, who you would think with the fact that the bot lane is rotated up to the top side of the map, would have grabbed that in a moment. So just in time for FlyQuest Academy. Uh, and if FlyQuest can actually use it to him? grab a turret, that'd be great. Ooh, they spot him. Papa Chow's actually cutting him off. Going to try and block for the ulti, but no. He's just going to wait out all the CC. Stood aside, though. No, not quite out there, but JJ going to eat the stun. Lost on a rampage. Gets another cash in. Papa Chow having a big game thus far. Doing a lot of the legwork for setting up these kills. Monty in a spot of bother, but not enough there. He's going to clear the rest of these out and play it safe. And looks like turrets are going to start falling pretty quickly in this game. 4,000 gold up for Echo Fox and counting as loss gets yet. No, he backs up. Oh, oh. Counter TP. Papa Chow going to get tagged up here. No, the next one. Alorum, they're going to cut him off. Very split fight. A shrimp gets stunned by the permafrost. The turret's low, but it's still not dead. Alorum forced to flash out from under the decimating smash. Papa Chow, though, finds shrimp. Again, the extension is good, but here's the last bounce. Over the wall for two. Blast code is there. They pop it. They're not going to get out. Actually, they will. They make it over despite the stretching strike. And no, now in the front side of Shrimp, who was Blobblitz, gets just taken out by Demonte. Keen having no way into that fight. They got cut off by Demonte. Allowed them to win that fight. They grabbed the turret as well. Second one of the game. Shrimp loses his passive, goes down on a nice attempt to bring people over the wall, but like you said, that blast cone sending them right back over. I wasn't sure how the interaction works, but today I've learned. Blast cone trumps all as Keen, not that safe. Even 1v1, kind of maybe realizing he's going to go back. So watch this very interesting engage again. Yeah, Keen doesn't quite follow up far enough on Shrimp. He's trying to go with him. Then they see he starts getting turned around. Demonte is going to start coming up behind, so they get split here. As Keen starts backing off, you're going to see Demonte is going to be able to go chunk him out. Keen keeps running, and now he's split from the fight. Won't be able to join in right as Shrimp goes over the wall. And so even though the Blast Cone saves them, there's no Azir throwing and damage in, zoning people away, doing anything. He's just clearing a ward. Yep, Demonte just finishes off to Zack in the passive as another fight is brewing. Attempt in the mid lane here. Ult from Sedge was burnt. Yeah, that's also worth knowing that JJ was dead to start that fight as well. So just an odd numbered fight that FlyQuest really probably shouldn't have bothered taking, knowing that the TPs were equal. It wasn't like no was showing up behind a defenseless Draven uh, there. And the good responses continue here. For Echo Fox, two turrets up to none, 6,000 gold ahead now, as the snowball has really started rolling. And there's that Draven, two and a half items completed, one of them being Infinity Edge. With that zeal also there, this is a very scary carry. Yeah, and I like the, the comp of Echo Fox as a whole. While it does lean heavily on the Draven's early game, uh, assuming he kind of follows up on what you're expecting him to do, it is a great bridge to some of these other champions. The fact that you couldn't pressure mid lane quite as hard as you wanted to against the Kassadin, who's now becoming a threat. The fact that you have this infinitely scaling tank in the top lane with Cho'Gath means that you have multiple other things working in your comp besides just early game. Yeah, and you can see Shelly does get used, is probably timing out. Does go down the turret in mid, even stays up here. If it wasn't for that Rift Herald take, could be on the on track for a perfect game here by Echo Fox Academy. Instead, going to maybe just try and keep it a shot out instead. Because they really do want to take the last out of turret here and open up that map even further. It's going to be hard though, Azir known for his yep. wave clear. And Echo Fox don't really have the trickiest ways of getting onto him. Uh, the best that they can do is hope a hook or a Sejuani alt lands from long range and they can blow him up. But Azir plays pretty safe, so 
Might be a little difficult for Echo Fox to stall out. Short range carries of Kasten and Draven means that if this game goes on for a long time and things start stalling out, you have to be worried about the back line of FlyQuest just straight outranging them and out DPSing them. Yeah, I think tough, but Echo Fox should have more than enough room now to play the map and kind of do what FlyQuest have been doing to them oh, all yeah. series. Just play the side lanes, pressure up, and their macro likely certainly not as clean as FlyQuest, but probably good enough to win from this point. Great all there from Odd Orange as well. You know, let it rip, lost again. Unstoppable! As he grabs yet another kill. He is 100% KP in this game. Leaning very heavily on their only import player in the roster. Lost the young AD carry from the OCE region. Yep. Doing you proud, right? Yeah, I mean, looks good there. Maybe looks better here. As Demonte smells blood, wants Keen. Damage down. Oh, hello, Alorum. They're going to dive in for a rupture is good. That's one kill. Lost gets yet another one. As the Scion is going to ride in a good old back from Shrimp, and they just don't have enough Alorum. He's just going to take down the tanky Zack, and the mid turret's going to fall as well. All this snowballing from the pick on Aerie, who had Flash. He could have dodged out on that max range. Odd Orange ultimate got greedy, thought he could sidestep it. He goes down, and then it leads to this kind of long, strung out sequence where now Keen's out of position, not just clearing in the mid wave. He tries to get back under his turret, but he's not able to do so. Shrimp goes down as well, and with no smite available and a choke gap, this Baron is pretty free for Echo Fox. Yeah, this Draven does more than enough damage to get it done. Lost is going to hit down the Baron. Fox will claim it, and he has 3,000 gold to go and spend. As Demonte can't kill the Bannock minion, yeah, I was about to we'll say, lose the turret. More importantly than anything, Hero Banner Minion. Well, good work there for FlyQuest, but this is going to be a tough comeback. You just got to wonder why Shrimp is going in with a dead AD carry right now, not even picking a number, a fair fight. Alrum was on the rotation first, and he shows up way before No with the Scion. Then there's that kind of miscommunication as No comes flying in. Shrimp saves all of them from the Scion ultimate, uh, and just too easy to find these kills. Yep. Beast there from Alorum finishes off that kill, and Baron is extremely trivial after that point. As Alorum even fancies himself yet another snack. Drake number two, third overall in the game, as a Cloud Drake will likely go over here to Echo Fox Academy, but two minutes and 40 seconds of this Baron to work with. Lost has, that's like four and a half thousand gold ahead of his opponent. Yeah, and the closest to him is Keen at 8,700, so really, Really not close at all to this Draven. If they can't find a way onto him, if they can't kidnap him back with the Zack, there's almost no fight that Echo Fox will lose. Got another BF sword as well after rapid fire cannon has been completed. Demonte now kind of finally transitioning over to these side lands, almost level 16. Really at that big tipping point for Cassidy when he has rank 3 ulti. And I mean, FlyQuest have already shown this player so they can make some big comebacks, but this one's going to be tricky. A good let's bounce, but I think he's going to dive before it matters. He will flash out of the way. The Draven ult is going to follow, but only tags Harry once. Demonte instead straight in there for the follow-up harass, but Riff walks over the wall just to be safe. He got the heal out of him, Airy panicking. Oh, that's big. why he didn't take any damage. Yeah, I mean, he had the black shield on him as well, so the Cassidy combo didn't look like it did anything, but... I mean, it really wasn't going to do anything. Aerie would have been fine without that heal. So good job by Demonte getting a free summoner out. Yep. Tower pressure mounting. Minute 30 left on the Baron. T2 in mid looking a little unhealthy. But Keen there with the wave clear. Still lost in Demonte team up for turret number four. And we're pretty much 10,000 gold ahead now for Echo Fox Academy. This has been a vastly different game. Much more suited to, I think, Echo Fox Academy style of play this time. You gotta wonder, you know, not looking too far ahead because there's no inhibitors down yet, Pastry. That's and true. we've seen FlyQuest come back a couple of times, so I don't want to get too far ahead, but you gotta wonder what else Echo Fox has in the playbook if the Draven gets banned out. What else can they look to to really abuse uh, FlyQuest here? Because this is a great, you know, switch up. It was a great change in momentum. Maybe that's really what they needed, but uh, you gotta think if they go back to just straight standard play, they're still gonna struggle. Well, that will be a question for the next game if we get one. Mm -hmm. Echo Fox Academy certainly making a very strong case for playing at least one more in this series. But like you said, at, at this point, we don't call FlyQuest Academy games until the Nexus is officially exploited, given that they came back with a very, very low Nexus yep. in their semi-final. It's okay, we'll, we'll keep bringing it up every single yeah. time. 
And today just feels like a good day to bring it up. I don't know I what it is. I feel like this is the exact kind of game Golden Glue hopes FlyQuest wins just so <laughs> someone else can experience it with him, you know? <laughs> to be able to go over the Echo Fox guys and be like, you know what we dealt with now. Hey, yeah, that's in the back of their mind. Maybe, maybe in solidarity of our other well, uh, may bring Academy team. We, yes. should, uh, we, should, we should just throw it away. I don't think that's going to be it as Bloodthirst are now done for this Raven. We'll check in though with the rest of the map here as Demonte also up three items with a Void Star, level 16, so feeling good. Even has Ignite, doesn't want TP right now, is just uh, fancying that maximum 1v1 pressure. Just a patch with Ignite buff, I believe. I right? believe so. So, not actually that bad of a late game summoner anymore. Before, it was basically only useful late game for cutting through healing, which with Shrimp, you know, has some value, but it does also help a lot more with damage. Uh, it ramps up all the way to 500, I think, at level 18, so not insignificant at all. Like you said, though, Baron has worn off, and Fox still needs to take inhibitors down to really get things going. Can't hit the Nexus without them, as King and Lucy's Banshee's Veil. Odd Orange and the rest of the squad hunting around as Alorum gets things going in the bot lane, pushing those forward as well. And it's not just Lost that's huge right now, which is obviously where your eyes kind of go to when you see things like those auto attacks taking uh, about a fifth of Shrimp's health bar. But their tanks are also really far ahead too. Alorum on three items, uh, Odd Orange getting close to his third compared to just two on their comp opponent's side. Keen also not having a Void Staff means he's not going to be able to chew through them easily. So FlyQuest is going to need some time to get back into this game. Once it gets out, Keen also cleanses off Odd Orange's ulti, but Trip now going to be the next target. Redemption is down. Devante wants it. He's not going to grab it, but I don't think it's going to matter. Shrimp back in the Bloblets. Just going to hit him down slowly. No, they can't get the next two, but no rides in to protect his jungler. Well played by FlyQuest to kind of live through that. Cost them a lot of summoners, cost them a passive or two. Uh, but they do hold on. No deaths, no turrets lost either. Baron in a minute and a half, though, and you can feel how hard it is for FlyQuest to do anything there. Echo Fox played that one pretty aggressive and still not even close to getting punished. Yeah, I mean, Kamundi is going to go back. He has more than enough time to reset before the Baron is back out on the map. Spend his gold. Fox will just fall back and get vision. They don't even need that badly, given that FlyQuest have been trapped against the walls of their base for the last few minutes. So it should be a pretty easy second Baron take here for Echo Fox Academy. Maybe that's the time where FlyQuest feel they should shove in and contest for it, but maybe not. They've been playing pretty slowly on defense so far. And with how far ahead Echo Fox is, all the vision control that they have, their tanks being so big, it's going to be very hard to win a fight around Baron. Not going to do too much, but Echo Fox is uh, potentially going to have to fight for division control as FlyQuest make their way out of the base. A yeah, couple wards here and there, but very deep control wards placed already by Echo Fox. Just going to leave that one left of Papa Chow hook. Not going to land was often no. But not quite enough reach to land that one. Just again waiting. 20 seconds now to this Baron's back up. Come on, take continuing to pressure down here in the side lane. And Lost even going to step forward and threaten. I mean, no one is safe from this Draven right now. Absolutely not. And with no teleport on Demonte's making the right decision of split pushing up in the top lane. Sometimes with Baron buff spawning, people are like, why aren't he down on the bot side? But this way he's still in range. If a fight like this breaks It's out. a great pick to get. If you can get it unstoppable, but not invulnerable, Shrimp will live for a little while longer. But the old is going to find him on the other side. He's so low, but Fox just can't find a kill. But JJ insta flashes away from that Draven. Insta flashes away. Knew if he took another one there, he might go down. Everyone alive on FlyQuest has, once again, they absorbed the pressure from Echo Fox. They didn't even lose a summoner on Shrimp. Oh, another catch on the node. Perhaps they're going to look to try and turn it around the bat. I mean, it's doing work, but JJ almost gets one shot by the Draven. And no, he's caught in the front side. He can't ult out with the block. No, he's going to die in zombie form as well. And Echo Fox 5v4 for 45 seconds. Not looking at the Baron. They want to break the base instead. I think the right choice given where the waves are. Alorum going in, look to tie up Shrimp. Johnson just flashing in, oh he takes down Harry. He's just such a monster right now. The tower's gonna fall to Monte, will chase in onto Kane. JJ limps away after almost getting one shot by a Draven Axe. And that inhibitor's gone down. That might be game as well. Keen is gonna have a hard time walking forward in the face of Demonte and Lost. They have Alorum who's absolutely monster. 
monstrous in just taking Boss these turrets. In. He's like, no one right now can face check these axes, so they'll just go in for the turrets. Papachow finds a good hook. Keen, he's going to maybe get a kill on the backside as a result, but Papachow barely going to live. Knock up on a Keen. Lost goes in for a one, two shots. The shield there, not enough to break through, but the Nexus is just being exposed. No, he's going to try and get something done, but Echo Fox start the path of the reverse sweep as they take down FlyQuest in game three. Off the back of Lost on your screen there, huge performance on the Draven pick, willing to take the risk on the champion and then executing in the early game, but you gotta give some props to Papa Chow, landing a ton of hooks to set the team up. And a good carry from the bot lane, Odd Orange bouncing back as well under less pressure. The Cassidy pick paying dividends as well as put some extra pressure on the side yep. lanes. And you got to get ready for game four here. I mean, you don't have to do all of the things they did in draft that were quite drastic, but I think a lot of the little changes like Aloran picking a comfort pick and taking that tank and really just having more pressure and clearly a lot more knowledge of how to play these teamfight situations. I don't think you have to pick Draven, but I think you probably have to ban Kaylin if you're not going to pick it. Like, I think they answered as like extremely as they like could just to maybe get some momentum for themselves. I don't expect that draft to be repeated again, but I think the game plan sh should be what they're going for. Yeah, I think you can expect a lot of similar things like the Caitlyn ban, like you said. I think the Draven, if it doesn't get banned, I don't mind seeing yeah. it again because... I mean, I'll watch that game again. I'll watch that game again. I'm just saying like from a strategic perspective, sure. do they have an answer? Ari and JJ have been playing pretty much Jin, Caitlyn, and then Morgana or Nami or some kind of range stuff to protect it recently. I mean, they are pretty good on tanks as well. We saw the Alistar, so mm. maybe they pick more engaged to punish the immobile Draven if it shows up again, but good surprise here in game three. Certainly looking good. We'll see how Echo Fox struck back in the series as we send it back over to the analyst desk. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and what a game, what a comeback. We see Lost captaining these guys, getting them off Lewis Island. They're going to be now having some wins under their belt to see if they can go farther. And just really getting right into this one, I think it is kind of the lost show, but you have to have a team behind you to do these things. But they did focus that bot lane. They focused the Draven pick. Yeah, I liked how they got the Caitlyn out in the picks and bands, made the adjustment for something else. It was the first pick Jin for FlyQuest Academy. Yeah. And then right here, Papa Chow, the setup for Lost. This was beautiful. I love it. I love it every single time a Thresh hooks a Morgana with spell shoot on and they just take it a mile away. <laughs> and then Draven gets 700 gold for first blood. Oh. Yeah, that, 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 as soon as that kill happened, I was like, oh, well, now this is, uh, this is not looking too good for, for Fly, you know. So, Tyler, Tyler would have been proud. So easy setup. Yes. A, a plus, A plus. <laughs> Seeing that setup in the bot lane, kind of what's your idea as a mid laner? Saying, we've been behind, now we get a lead. What are your kind of thoughts in the beginning of the game there? What may have been going through Echo Fox's head? You know, I kind of liked the, the comp they went for. They kind of went for a, a completely different comp. They didn't play standard picks. You know, they played Cassid and Draven. Uh, where Cassid, they're both really snowball -y champs. Mm -hmm. uh, and they ended up snowballing. And Cassid and also, he did fine the whole game. You know, he... They got to level 16. If you get to level 16 on Cassid, then the game's pretty hard. <laughs> Thank you very much. For the yeah, right. Team. So, you know, even though Draven got most of the spotlight there, Cassid was fine. He, he felt really good scaling up into the late game, and you know, it didn't really look like there was much windows for FlyQuest to do anything. Yeah, I had a bit of a worry, though, myself in the draft, because Cassid usually will want to flank and then, like, join the team later, and I thought that this composition from Fo from Fox really didn't have enough wave clear if unless they snowballed, okay. right? Because if Draven doesn't get ahead and you're in an even game state, or the Haston doesn't get ahead, uh, the Azir will wave clear, the Zac can dive turrets, the Morgana can fish for bindings in siege situations, yeah. and then you really do have to find a way to engage on them, and it's like you kind of rely on Thresh and Sejuani to do that. Uh, so I feel like it, it's kind of a high variance composition to run. I don't think it has a very good fallback plan if you get any, like, even the semblance of behind. Right. So I thought it was risky. I'm glad they did it, though, because yeah. in game three, you something. do have to take those risks and get your, get your confidence back. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but it's something I would not try at home, basically. <laughs> right. And, and maybe even that it, it made FlyQuest kind of say, like, hey, we have that Azir. If they don't do well early, we can easily mm -hmm. just get past them in that portion of the game if Draven or Kassan hasn't gotten kills. Was not the case. We'll move ahead to 10 at 30 in as Fox Academy. Three for zero here. Dragon plus a lot of lost on your screen. Yeah, this is pretty weird. If you see FlyQuest positioning, they're basically like, li like in a straight line throughout the river. Very None of them are grouped defense. up. They're, every single person is by themselves, and FlyQuest just kind of run them over since they're so split up. Or Echo Fox runs them over. They're both like, <laughs> start with an F, end with an A. Like <laughs> Fox Academy and Fly Academy. Like, yeah, but still, Lost. This is basically just Lost highlights here, because this guy dodging, this the binding, 
and then having it just completely turned around. He is picking up gold constantly here. I loved his use of flash as well, like just the small things he did even towards the end of the game where the rapid fire cannons, the first shot, then you flash forward immediately to get another hit in. So you actually have almost basically like two attacks land around the same time. Yeah, everything was just going right for the Draven this game. Every single time there was a kill, he almost always got the kill. Yeah. He had really good uh, ultimate usage too. He really, uh, as we, can, as we can see in the and, damage And too. looking at this, yeah. something happened that you guys wanted to, is that Caitlyn was on the ban list. And we saw an absolute change in that bottom for the teams. Yeah, and I don't think Aerie necessarily played bad. You know, I, I, Morgana died early in the lane, and once Draven's up that gold, there's nothing you can really do. So I, I don't know if that was, I, I still think Aerie did fine in that game, but you definitely felt like when he was off that Caitlyn, there wasn't the same impact. Yeah, I completely agree. I do think that Papa Chow as well deserves some credit. Like, mm -hmm. being a role player and setting the person Absolutely. up, you're not going to have that 25,000 damage yourself, but the hook, the flash, basically the follow of on the yep. Morgana was what made that start off and had that snowball going for the 700 gold he picked up. Papa Chow got to be feeling pretty good, saying, hey, remember those plays I made in AC LCS a little bit? I want to bring a few back here and, and do some of my own to help out Lost. So that looks very good coming in here for Echo Fox, finally getting a win under their belt, and as we said, kind of in their own terms, terms, what do we want to see them keep doing? Because I think FlyQuest as a team is kind of even more uh, in, engaged or even enraged to try something tricky themselves. Yeah, you know, as Irene said, that was a pretty high variance comp that uh, Echo Fox pulled out. So I'm right. pretty interested to see, you know, will they pull out another high variance comp or will they try to like, oh, we got our momentum back. We're going to play standard now. You know, I can't really say, I'm probably going to say FlyQuest is still going to play standard, but I'm not sure what Echo Fox is going to do. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen here either because Fox, if they swap back to the blue side, then they might be able to get the Caitlyn themselves, right. uh, which I don't think you'd then have to run a Draven and like, mm -hmm. risk that. So I think Fox, for them, I kind of want to actually see them uh, play to the bottom lane again and have uh, Lost basically have in a position to carry because I thought Aerie actually did well when he was ahead and had a carry right. kind of opportunity. So preventing Aerie from having that opportunity, allowing Lost to be a point of strength for you, allows your jungler to be freed up and kind of cover Odd Orange's uh, performance up against Shrimp because I still think that Shrimp is performing a little bit better than him on the day. And if you have a bottom lane that's going to be able to carry, you can kind of circumvent that and hide it. I believe it. I heard Fox getting blue side next. Before we go to break, what's your first pick for that blue side? What do you want to see him get? Caitlyn. Caitlyn, yeah. Caitlyn, Caitlyn. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. You heard it here from the analysts. Echo Fox have extended this series, but they've got more games to win if they want to stop FlyQuest Academy. Stay tuned for game four after the break. Oh, he's in there again. They're going to move Lost in and try and get the 2v2 kill. JJ hits the target to stand aside. Misses by Lost. Flashes in. First blood in the 2v2. Does finally finish off Shrimp Draven off. Oh. Finding a bit of damage. He snipes JJ. If you have Lantern yes, again, fine. look me, look me. If you have Lantern again. I can look more. Yeah. Look more. Kill more. Nice. nice job. They're going to dive in for a rupture is good. That's one kill. Lost gets yet another one. As the Scion is going to ride in a good old back from Shrimp, but I just don't have enough Alorum. He's just going to take down the tanky Zack. Alorum going in, looks to tie up Shrimp. Dross is just flashing oh in. He takes down Harry. He's just such a monster right now. 